Welcome back to another episode of Denside Depot, your source for premium and free Denside content. Today we're gonna to be doing an update on what I'm calling the Jade Interceptor truck for obvious reasons it's getting a Crown Vic front end, or I should say now has a Crown Vic front end. So I wanna go over the project here today. The body will be going on later today. As I hoped, the bed is completely rust free. It's POR 15 underneath. Didn't require any um, body work at all. Found some cool things under the seat of the truck. A safety flasher from the 80s, made in Korea. So before China was even importing stuff here. Local Acme newspaper from 1995. And a brand new crisp $1 bill from 2001. Can't make that up. Okay, so today I'm gonna to go over everything I did for my Crown Vic swap. I'm not saying it's the best way or the right way to do it, it's just the way that I did it. Um, I'm gonna show all the part numbers, I'm gonna show some measurements and dimensions, uh, and I'm pretty happy with how this truck came out so far, except for a couple small things. Uh, the cab was off this truck, it ended up getting a complete frame off restoration, top to bottom. Uh, in the back, five inch lowering kit, just an eBay kit which is a rear shackle and a front bracket, and that's supposed to lower five inches. DJM shocks, 19 inches, eyelet to eyelet. The exhaust system off Junior Mint, and I added a couple tips off of Amazon, and you know, new brake lines and new brakes, fuel tank, all that good stuff. Been cleaning up the cab a little bit. It actually had green paint underneath some of the surface rust on the roof, so that was awesome. Looking really good inside, almost no rust. I did end up doing, I knew I needed to do the cab mount and then when I took the cab mount out, I realized that the floorboard was pretty much not weldable or I couldn't weld the cab mount to it. So called up Auto Metal Direct and they sent me a left side floorboard and I already had the cab mount. No one's paying me to say this, but I only use A and B metal. It is the best. I'm probably at the point now where I'd rather have A and D uh, than even an NOS piece, just because they're powder coated or electronically coated, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so here's what I got at the front. It is a police interceptor front off an 05 uh, squad car. One of the ways you can tell is if you have a police interceptor one is you will have the aluminum lower control arms. Now, I would actually recommend that you don't get one with the, a lower aluminum control arm because I ran into an issue that I wasn't aware of. And that is these rear bushings, they're actually different for aluminum ones, so you have an option. You have to find the right bushing that is, has a bigger eyelet, which I could not find, or you can machine down the uh, the bolt that comes out of the back of the control arm, which is what I did. So those are welded in all around. And it might be kind of hard to see, but they're gusted on the inside of the frame, so it's nice and strong. Okay, really quick, I'll show you how I got my measurements. Um, for everyone, it's different, and I think the bump sides might be slightly different, I don't know, but this is how I did it for my truck. So if you're looking at the frame on the driver's side, when you cut out the old cross member, you're gonna see two holes. You're gonna see a hole here and a hole here. Now, some people might enlarge this one and put it in. Some people might enlarge this one and drop the dowels for the Crown Vic in. Some people drill it right in the center. The way I did it was I went 3 eighths of an inch off of the back of the back hole, and then I went 1 and 1 eighth from the inner edge of the frame, which gave me a point right here. Okay, and then I hit that with a punch and then I drilled it out um, with a 1 8 bit and then I went to a step bit. I would recommend that you get the medium grade one from Harbor Freight. Not the cheap one, not the expensive one, the medium grade one. So that's 3 8 back from the edge of the front hole and 1 and 1 8 from the inside edge of the frame. And then when you measure it from side to side, it should be the same distance between your two dowels, which I believe was 32 and a half. It turned out to be exactly 32 and a half for me. So I punched it, drilled it, tapped it out to three quarter inch. And when I put the subframe on, it literally fell right into place like it was supposed to be there. So that's how I did this. For reference sake, this is the outside driver's edge of the frame. 
That's the inside, that's the front hole, that's the back hole. Three eighths back, one eighth in, put my hole right there and it came very close to hitting this hole with the step bit, um, but it just missed it. This might not be perfectly to scale, but that's how I did it. I have had a fender on this truck. I am pretty happy with the centering of it. You might be better served to have, have your fender on and make sure that you're happy with the wheel spacing. Um, I have another truck in the backyard where I didn't do it, but I think the person that did do it put it in the center of this hole, and it looks goofy to me. It looks like it's too far forward. So I, I think I'm happy with, with where I did that. So that's how I did my measurements. All right, here's what I did for the conversion. The steering shaft has a rag joint on it, and you have to slice it off. I did some pie cuts, and then I gently made one cut and pried it apart and pulled it off. It was a pain and it is mushroomed a little bit in the back. And then that exposes the splines. While I had it off, I put a DJM uh, lower column bearing in, of course. Um, and here's the parts I used to make this happen. The top joint is a one inch DD by three, three quarter, 36 spline. Then I have a Borgeson uh, steering shaft. 24 inch collapsible 4450024. And then on the bottom on the actual Crown Vic rack, the bottom one is 3 quarter DD by Ford Triangle. eBay, Amazon, wherever you get them is fine. On the actual power steering rack, you can see my fittings that I use. There's lots of different brands that you can get. I just went with a known brand but you can get cheaper ones off Amazon they, they make all sorts of stuff the fittings I went with are massive speed MAPL 9688 and then the rest of the fittings that you'll need for the back of your pump I went with a Saginaw pump hopefully I don't know if it's gonna work yet M16 by 1.5 o-ring to 6AN male fitting and then you're gonna need two 90 degree 6AN fittings and one 45 degree um, 6 a.m. to 3 a's hose. So the way I did it was um, I used PTFE line for the uh, pressure side, which is essentially it's, it's like a some sort of fabric on the outside and then it's steel and then it's Teflon in the middle. It's a really strong line. It's, re it's a really good product. And then for the low pressure, it's just a regular 3 ace line because obviously it's low pressure. I'm not going to talk about the power steering setup uh, too much because I'm not sure if it's going to work yet. But essentially it's an Amazon bracket, an Econoline van, a uh, Saginaw pump, and the appropriate Econoline van uh, pulley. I, I don't know if this is, this is necessarily going to work right. I have to get a slightly smaller belt than what I have right now. We'll see what happens. I might go back, but I was hoping to avoid using the crappy Ford pump. As we all know, they whine and they're not very powerful. So we'll see what happens. Now, something else I want to point out on the rack is I had a cop car, an 05 cop car. And the problem with that is the cop cars come with this little electronic sensor that raises and lowers the pressure inside the rack or whatever, whatever it is. You don't want that because it'll cause issues. So you want to get one that I believe is 08 and newer, and you'll just essentially see that there's just a bare hole there. So I just got one off of Rock Auto, and, and that was that. I put all new, new control arms, new struts, new sway bar links, all that good stuff. Uh, the bacon strip rotors from asbestos, you know, calipers, and whatever, painted it red, make it look so much easier, whatever. So I figured you got it all apart, you might as well do it. The engine is still bone stock. Um, just did an intake, poly carb, the exhaust system off Junior Mint, like I said. I relocated the proportion of valve under the frame where you'd find a four wheel drive one. Stock master cylinder, everything else is pretty much stock. And that's pretty much it. So the body is going to be going on this truck here very shortly. The wheels that you see are just from mock up. Um, I did box in the frame welding all the way down the seam, all the way across, all the way across and around the back and everything else. When I pulled 
the support bar off the front. Uh, the frame didn't move at all. So I don't think I have any issues there. So it should be good. I mean, we'll, we'll see what happens. This truck is just going to be a little shop truck for driving around. It's not going to be anything high performance. That's why I just left the engine alone the way it is. All new hoses, rubbers, heater core, everything that just makes sense to do while you have it all apart. And we'll see how it goes. So we're going to oil this truck up and we're going to see how shiny it gets and how much it brings out the paint. I'm looking forward to seeing it. That will be the next video, hopefully with this truck running and driving. I have a few more things to wrap up. Uh, but this truck should pretty much be done here within, I'd say, the next two days. So thanks for watching my channel. Uh, if you like my content, if you like downside trucks, like, subscribe, comment, tell me what you like, what you don't like, would you recommend me changing, whatever. Appreciate it. Thank you. Looking forward to seeing you next video.